the ability to learn fast because you go understand what their world is and then the next person's world and then the next person's yeah. world. The reason why I did this uh, presentation, The Naked Architect, mm -hmm. is about you underestimate the skills needed by yeah. an enterprise architect by a magnitude. Mm -hmm. So this is more uh, or less a hiring ad for an enterprise architect in a large yeah. company. Yeah. You have to have all these skills. Yeah. If you don't, then you have some problems, yeah. some serious problems. Yeah, because the ability to connect and I think I told you I had one gig I went to where they said, you've worked in so many different industries, that must mean you're no good at anything. And I, my main selling pitch is that I've worked in so many different industries that I can connect anything. Yeah. So you, it's completely back to front understanding of what an architect actually delivers, what, actually, what an architect presents. It's the ability to connect. You, I th both you and, I think it was particularly you and also Martin Sykes was talking about the ability to learn fast because you've got to understand what their world is and then the next person's world and then the next person's yes. world. So you've got to be able to connect to a new field and get very a basic fast. understanding very fast. Because you're dealing with, with any decent sized organisation, you're dealing with hundreds if not thousands of specialities, each of which you can spend no more than a week understanding. Yeah. Or often less. Yeah. So. It's making those connections, the ability to make connections and pick up the basics to have. To, in fact, the test I use is, can I ask a question that actually makes sense, that is the right level of stupid? It's perfectly okay to ask a stupid question if it illustrates that I actually do have an understanding of somewhat of what they're on yeah. about. But I've got to understand at least the basic jargon, the basic yeah. terminology, yeah. the basic drivers. You might then I can ask a useful, stupid question. Yeah, you have to have an overview of the yeah. business. Yeah. And this is why I recommend when you're doing a new architect as my assignment is to uh, uh, read the annual report for the company. Yeah. Because it states very much what it's doing. It also tells you a lot of search areas. It's giving you basic the basics of a data model. Yeah. Information model, certainly. The basics of the drivers, the motivation structures, yeah. the um, the stakeholders, it's giving you all of those things yeah. just in one report. What do, what do they focus on? Yeah. And what's the big picture here? Yeah. Yeah. And then also tells you a lot of, often tells you a lot about how they are measuring success, which may not have much, if any, connection with the enterprise that they're in. Mm. And also problem. try to, if it's a consumer company, mm -hmm. try to be a customer of that company. Yes. Yeah. Because then you have a very on hands experience, how is it to be a customer? Yeah. Another one is just doing a quick social search because that will tell you who the anti clients are. Yeah. The people who do not like the company as yeah. well as the ones who do. Yeah. And therefore tell you that often tells you a lot more about the values of the broader enterprise mm -hmm. and how well the organization is fitting in. You may have a vision and you may have some uh, corporate policies and then do you adhere to them. Yeah. So the difference between espoused and actual values is another yeah. classic one. Yeah. Hence again, the, um, that, the value of Stafford Beer's phrase about posiwid, about the purpose of the system is expressed in what it does. Yeah. That do we understand what the organisation is actually doing as opposed to what it claims to do? Mm. Uh, for example, one local supermarket here, it's, it talks about plan A is to be uh, completely independent, sort of completely recyclable and everything. Yeah. And almost none of its products are recyclable. Yeah. So there is a mismatch straight away. Yeah. It's about uh, doing... it's about not actually following yeah. through. Yeah. Uh, not in not in the case of deliberate for shortcutting because they do have a strong reputation. It's just yeah. someone's not been making connecting the dots. Yeah. That's so again what I talked about before about what I call dotting the joins. Is that every time we have someone who's joining the dots, something else comes across and cuts. That it fragments it. It's fragmentation is an issue yeah. I'm concerned about all the time. And the, the customer experience, that yeah. is the whole part of the company. Yeah. So how do we get, in which case that leads us back to enterprise architecture. What is the customer experience of enterprise architecture? One of the things I'm looking for is to, is to get people to say, that actually helped. This actually makes sense. 
A concrete example, in, this was in Australia Post, we built a, what was effectively a capability model. And you know you've got success and customer acceptance when people nick your work, they steal your work. Yeah. Every single manager downloaded a copy of this diagram and you had pinned it up on their wall. And they used it for all manner of different things like um, induction, you know, onboarding. Yeah. They used it for showing people where other people were working, yeah. where we fit within the whole. It was used by virtually everyone. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing where people say, this stuff is actually useful. So when people copy your work, that's the best flattery yeah. you can have. Yeah. I did a trick in another environment where I used to sit up in the cafe in the foyer with lots of interesting diagrams sort of sitting on the table. Yeah. Hog a large, you know, occupy a large table, at least this size, and leave diagrams scattered over the table while with us working on the laptop. So that would act as a magnet for people who were likely to be interested in what we're doing. Yeah. So it's a little sort of... Again, pull rather than push. We're not yeah. selling, we are the answer. We're just saying, we're trying to get things to work together. Are you interested? Which is that architecture is the responsibility actually of everyone, not just of the so-called architects. The role of architects to me is like in a, um, in like health and safety. It's everyone's responsibility. But there are certain people whose job it is to remind us yeah. that it's everyone's responsibility and to collate the information about that special specialism in the same way about security, about um, financial probity, about business ethics. Uh, there are people. Litter. Yeah, sorry, litter, well, litter, yeah. 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 Envi sort of um, sustainability, environmental management, minimization of waste, as you say. Yeah. So there are people who are involved with this, who can guide and build awareness of this, but. It's actually everyone's responsibility. It doesn't work unless it's actually everyone's responsibility. They have, they have to understand it. Yeah. So and yeah, they build. have to agree with it. Yeah. And then it's if it's made their life easier, they will do it. So that's one of the other things. Is that one of the jobs that we can do as architects is to make it easier for them to take on the responsibility of architecture. Yeah. And. That's where that big space comes in, about being able to see what's going on, about being able to lift those things.